What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. As the title states, I'm building a truck bed camper for my Tacoma and I'm really excited to get started on this project. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a rundown of my methods of construction and kind of my ideas for the build itself. If you guys are new to the channel, I've done some overland trailer builds in the past. I built three different ones and I got full video series on all of those. Uh, my goal with this project is to be just as comprehensive and detailed on the build as I was on those. So you can watch these videos, get inspired and go out there and build one of your own. Here I'm going to give you guys a look at what the camper design is going to be like. It's going to be constructed of all aluminum. If you guys watched my trailer builds in the past, you know I did steel. So working with aluminum is something new for me and something that I've been kind of practicing at here the past few weeks. And I'll get into some details about that here shortly. As far as the general idea of the construction goes is I want it to be a pop top camper. So basically the roof is going to pop straight up. I'll determine how far once I get there, determining how much headspace I want while sitting up on the bed. So obviously this is the bed of the truck. This will be the overhang on the cab itself. The overhang is gonna be a little longer than you traditionally see on these truck bed campers. It's gonna be about four feet total. And I did this because I want maximum standing room back here, even while the bed is fully deployed. Livable space in this camper is gonna be really important to me uh, for this build. I don't want the bed to take up the entire space down here. So when I'm in the truck, I can get out of bed while my wife is still sleeping and have some room to stand up and get changed, put some shoes on and get out of the camper without feeling like I have no space to do it. This section right here is actually part of the bed platform, which will be right here, and it'll be allowed to slide back and give you access to the whole bed of the truck. So when this is slid out, you'll have the bed set up and still have your standing room. And then when this is closed all the way in, you'll have plenty of room to cook or stand or do whatever you'd like. As for the overall profile of this build, I'm not going for just a straight up box. Might be kind of hard to tell, but there is a three degree slant here uh, because I didn't want just straight up vertical walls. The bottom is a little wider than the top and then both edges should meet nicely and that should give it just a little bit more of a sleeker look without sacrificing a ton of room because as you know having vertical walls would give you the most space but just a three degree slant like this is only robbing maybe just a couple inches here but I think it'll be worth it for the overall appearance of the camper. I plan to have the overhang here as close to the roof of the truck as I can get without worrying about it making contact. Our bottom piece here is only four inches thick and then the roof of our camper is three inches thick so by the time you add the seal it'll be just over seven inches thick total so it's not going to be this huge thing hanging over the top of the truck causing wind drag. Another thing to address wind drag is I'm going to have enough room to leave part of my front roof rack that's already on the cab there. I will have to cut and modify that roof rack to allow this to sit close to the cab but I think leaving that little section up there with our ramp will help direct wind flow and help it flow right over this camper and not become a big wind barrier. For the sides, I, right now I'm planning to do two doors on each side and I'm doing that because I need to be able to bend the sheet metal to make the doors and I don't have something that could bend that long. That being said, that could change in the future. I could just do one solid door on each side where they hinge open 90 degrees and have access to the camper. Like most truck bed campers you see, you know they keep the tailgate and then they have a hatch that flips up. My plan is to actually do a rear door, very similar to how the alloy cabs do. I really like how they do the rear door. I am gonna delete the tailgate, which is something I've really debated for a while because I like having that space. But being able to step up in and out of this camper very easily is gonna be huge for me. So I think not having a tailgate and just being able to have, be able to step on the bumper and then right into the camper is gonna make it much more fun and livable to deal with. This is our back wall to the camper. This is just kind of a rough sketch. I'm trying to get material sizes so I know how much to order. Basically, it's gonna be like a three foot wide opening and then about 43 inches tall. So very generous opening in the door. And then I may actually mount my spare tire to this door like the Allocabs cabs do as well. We'll just have to see as I get going with this build. Because as you guys know, I do have a swing out on my truck already. So, so I can just leave my swing out and then have my door open to the driver's side instead of the passenger side. But I'm still undecided on what I wanna do. Luckily, that's one of the last things I'll worry about once I get this part of the camper done. So we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. As far as material sizes go, guys, I will cover all of this stuff in depth as I'm building the camper. As of right now, everything will be one eighth of an inch wall aluminum tubing. And it can vary from one by two to one by three, or even three quarter to one inch square tube. I will have some blueprints available for this thing once I get the build complete and I know some true sizes. That way you guys can go buy the blueprints and build something like this yourself based off my models. Now, as for welding all of this together, obviously, as you know, welding aluminum is a different process 
than from welding steel. And I'm brand new to this process. So if you guys have never welded aluminum and you're watching this video, please don't be discouraged because I'm also brand new to this process as well. Initially, I wanted to go ahead and do TIG welding because obviously, as you guys know, TIG welding just looks super cool on the internet and they make it look way easier than it actually is. I've had this TIG torch set up for a little while and I started messing with it the past few weeks, just trying to learn the basics and trying to see how feasible it was for me to build this camper utilizing TIG welding. I came to the conclusion that for my first project, this is a, a very large project to tackle when you're just learning TIG welding and I don't wanna have any structural integrity problems. So that being said, I did decide to go ahead and do an aluminum spool gun MIG welding instead. The TIG welding was working out pretty good. I mean, as you guys can see, I did get some decent beads laid down and this is just on a flat bar. The moment I went to do a lap joint or a fillet weld, which is gonna be what 90% of the welds are on this project, they just really turned <laughs> turned out really terrible. Uh, and that kind of had me a little discouraged. Started doing some research online and read that I'm not the only one having this issue. A lot of people can lay some beads on flat aluminum pretty well. And then the moment they go to a lap joint or a fillet weld, they start to run out of talent and realize that it takes uh, months and months and maybe even years of practice to really perfect this form of welding. That being said, I am gonna keep practicing this. This is gonna be something that I'm gonna have in my skill set. I'm just not gonna be utilizing it to build this camper this time. As for our spool gun MIG welding setup, uh, we're running a Parker spool gun and an Everlast MTS Lightning 225. And I'll have all this stuff linked in the description. You can pull this off with a, a way cheaper setup than this. I got this nice setup because obviously I'm into welding and fabricating, uh, so it was justified for me, but you can definitely pull it off without buying really expensive tools. So some people even convert a regular MIG welder to be able to accept aluminum wire. That being said, spool gun is the way to go. You don't have to worry about it kinking and it's just a super easy process and way more simple than TIG welding itself. I just got this uh, maybe two days ago and have ran a few practice beads. As you can see, they already look way better than my TIG weld did. Uh, I know they're not perfect and like I said, this is literally my probably two to three days after having this and I've only welded, you know, maybe 20 minutes with this thing. So as my project progresses, I'm gonna be getting a lot better. I did some tests where I welded and then I cut it with the bandsaw to see if I had any porosity in my welds and it looks to be good. I know you're supposed to sand these down and all that stuff, but I believe it'll hold just fine. And I'm really happy I decided to go with this route so I'm not super stressed about doing a bad job of building it with this TIG welder. When it comes to using a spool gun for MIG welding aluminum, you're gonna have a few options. I went with a 0.035 of an inch diameter wire and then I went with ER5356 spool itself. And I went with the 5356 because these are used for structural welds. There's another one you'll see, which is 4043, and that's more used for automotive parts such as radiators or intercoolers, or something that's gonna be introduced to a lot of heat in prolonged period of time. That is better suited for that. And then structural welding, they recommend the 5356. I'm not an expert at any of this. Any of you guys out here watching, that are our experts at welding aluminum and you have any insight, please drop it in the comments. Obviously, I'm not end all know all when it comes to this stuff and a lot of you guys out there know way more than I do. And once again, if any of this seems overwhelming, please don't be discouraged about learning how to MIG weld aluminum or even steel for that matter. YouTube videos are a great way to learn and that's exactly how I'm learning how to MIG weld. So if you start today uh, learning how to MIG weld, you'll be at the same level as I am as far as experience and skill on how to weld this stuff. And I'm just diving right into this project. I think it's easy enough that if you really take your time and learn and take notes and really focus on what you want to do, you can definitely learn how to do this yourself. And I highly encourage you guys take on a project like this. I do already have some material. This is for that main overhang beam that I mentioned before. This is the, the thickest structural piece. I went and picked this up from somewhat local place. I'm in the middle of finalizing my material list for the rest of this camper, which I hopefully will be ordering this week. So that means I'm going to be getting started on this thing soon as possible. By the time you guys see this video, I will probably already have pieces cut and welded and already getting started on this thing. I hope you guys are as excited about this build as I am. This is something I've been wanting to build for well over a year now, maybe even longer. It's just been kind of an idea in my head. Of course, after building those trailers, this is just, just something I've always wanted to make and I'm really excited to get started on it. Actually plan to have this done in 2023 and then I stumbled across the 80 series Land Cruiser and it just kind of took over my life. I was just obsessed with getting that thing on the road and drivable and now that that's to a point where I can just enjoy that truck. It's nice that I can focus on some other projects and it's nice to get back out here in the garage and get a nice big project going for you guys. I know a lot of you guys are here from the trailer builds and I know my content hasn't been at par with that stuff. So I'm sure you guys will be relieved to see some other stuff more related to what you came here for. 
That being said, thanks so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Also, just want to remind you guys, we do have some merch on the website and I will have that linked in the description. Uh, we got three different designs. We got a hat available and we will have some more stuff coming in the future. So if you head on over to adv4x4.us and check them out, really appreciate if you guys support the channel. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Please be patient with the uploads. A project like this takes a long time and it takes even longer when you're trying to film it. I'm gonna to try to make it as informative as possible so you guys can get out there, get inspired, and build one of your own. So I hope you guys stick around and follow along, and we'll see you on the next one.